All right, sis, so you're trying to get pregnant, but you're feeling this overwhelm. You're feeling like you're being let down by God during this journey. Maybe it's been taking too long. Maybe you've had multiple miscarriages. There's just this you know, overwhelming thought that God can't do it for you too. He's done it for the, all these other people, but he can't do it for you. You're having that, those thoughts. What do you do? What do you do when you feel let down by God? I want to share with you some things that you can do to fight against the enemy, to fight um, against the enemy and fight for your baby, fight for your mindset, fight for your faith. So stay tuned. All right, sis, let's just get straight into it. The first thing you can do is give thanks. Give thanks and worship God. Worship and praise confuses the enemy. Worship and praise confuses the enemy. There's this king in the um, Old Testament who went to war, okay? Went to war with his soldiers, but he sought the Lord. He gave thanks to the Lord. He prayed to the Lord first before he went into battle and because of that because of that the lord told him hey send out the choir send out the praise team before you start fighting what send out the praise team before you start fighting they started to praise the lord they started to praise the lord and that confused the enemy it confused their opponent it confused who they were fighting right because praise because worship confuses the enemy so when you feel this way when you feel let down by god turn that around start praising him for the things that he's done in your life start giving him thanks give him gratitude for the things that he has brought you out of to this point right now okay the second thing i want you to know is god still provides in the wilderness Think about Elijah. When Elijah went into the wilderness, he went to the wilderness and he prayed to God that he just might die. Everything was, it was just too much. It was just too much. He says, I've had enough. And he went to the wilderness, right? He went to the wilderness and he prayed that he might die. Maybe you feel that way. Maybe you've come into this place of depression, of anxiety, of this overwhelm, this fear of not being able to get pregnant ever right you're in this place but god but god god touched on elijah he ministered to his physical needs he said get up god said get up there an angel of the lord came down and said get up and here eat eat he provided food out of nowhere food and water out of nowhere twice because let me tell you, sis, you cannot get by in life when you're going through things. You cannot get by on a snack and a nap. A nap and a snack is not going to cut it when you are in a battle, when you are fighting against, against the enemy. We have to be in the word. The word is that food. The water is the Holy Spirit. And we have to combine those things to fight against the enemy, to fight in this battle for our baby. And the last thing I want you to know is that faith requires growth. Faith requires growth. But how many of us know that growth doesn't come without stretching? Growth doesn't come without stretching, right? Our faith has to be stretched in order to grow. When you think about this baby that you will conceive, the nine months you will start to grow, right? Your belly will start to grow and you'll get stretch marks, but you'll start to grow and the growth can't happen until, unless the belly stretches, right? So our, it's the same way with our faith. We can't grow in God unless we're stretching, stretching toward God. Think about the man with the crippled hand. In the Bible, it, it says that he had this crippled hand, but the Lord told him to stretch toward him, stretch toward him. And that obedience, him stretching, the man stretching towards, uh, towards the Lord, he, his hand was healed healed as new as the other, right? We have to continue to stretch towards the Lord. We have to continue to stretch towards the things that he has for us. Continue to stretch 
continue to have faith, continue to walk in faith and walk in purpose in what he has called you to do, what he has called you, what the desires that he's placed in your heart. Who sis? And that's why I created the Fertile Faith Sisterhood so that you could have an opportunity to continue to battle, continue to give thanks, continue to stretch toward God. I have this Fertile Faith Sisterhood is a online membership group where I do live lessons, weekly live Q&A sessions. We do TTC audits um, in regards to your cycle audits. Uh, and it's just really an opportunity to come and be supported and encouraged during your TTC journey. And if you are interested in the Fertile Faith Sisterhood, go ahead and click the link in the description down below so that you can get started, so that you can learn more about what the Fertile Faith Sisterhood is, and I will see you inside.